So we'll begin by asking, what really is annotation scale? Essentially, annotation scale is a dynamic scale factor that can be applied to particular element types for the purpose of accommodating the proper display of those elements at various print scales. So you can think of it as a print scale that, as desired, may be applied to various types of elements that are placed in your designs to help size or resize them relative to the desired print scale of your drawing. Every model in MicroStation, rather it's a design, drawing, or sheet model, contains an independent annotation scale property. The value of this property is then applied as a scale factor to the various annotative elements that you may place in a model and may also propagate to annotative elements in reference models as well. This is a dynamic setting, meaning that the value of the annotation scale can be then changed as desired to meet your specific needs and may be used to size up elements such as text, notes, dimensions, etc. to make them readable within a full-size one-to-one design or a design model. Now, I thought probably the best way to get a handle on this is just to simply come in and take a look at some examples of annotative elements that may be stored within a MicroStation model. So what we are going to do is kind of start things off by switching over to MicroStation. So here we are inside of MicroStation, and we're going to open up a DGN file and take a look at the contents thereof. Now, as mentioned, annotation scale is something that is unique to each model that you have within a MicroStation design file. If we were to come into the models dialog and create a new model from here, it doesn't matter what type of model that this is, rather it's a design, a drawing, or a sheet model. All of these support the use of annotation scale within them. So here, we're going to go ahead and set this to be a basic design model. You can decide whether it's 2D or 3D. That really doesn't matter. Then of course we need to come in here and give this a name. I'm going to go ahead and type staircase B. And then from here, we can supply a description, a reference logical name, for use within attaching as a reference file. Now this is where we immediately start to encounter the concept of annotation scale within our workflows. Here, as an example, you will see what the current active annotation scale will be within the new model that we're creating, at least the initial setting for that. In addition to that, there are several other settings that are contained here within the model properties as well. We'll get to those as we go ahead and move forward throughout the session here today. Now from there, I'm going to simply go ahead and click OK. And now, once the model has been created, that model has an annotation scale assigned to it. Now it's kind of hard to tell what that annotation scale is just by simply looking inside of the content of the model. But you can always go back to the model's dialog at any time and take a look at the properties of that model to either determine or change what the active annotation scale is. So if the normal annotation scale for the project that we are working on happens to be something like a 1 to 20, I can change that right from here. And then as soon as I select the scale from here, it then has the ability to be used by any type of element that can be considered annotative in MicroStation. Now that could be something like a piece of text or a note, for instance. But we'll talk more about the types of annotative elements that we have in just a little bit. Now. That's kind of where it gets its initial setting or its initial value for the active annotation scale. Let's take a look at some existing data that already has been drawn within a MicroStation model and see how annotation scale affects that. So here, I'm going to simply switch over to another model within our drawing file. And as you can see, what we've got is an architectural floor plan. Don't let the type of information kind of sway you as to whether annotation scale is a usable feature for you or not. Annotation scale can be used literally within any type of workflow within any discipline, whether that's architectural, as we see here, civil, plant and process, or mechanical design for that matter. Now, as we start to take a look at this, it's initially rather difficult to see whether we have elements that have been placed in this model that are, in fact, annotative. 
but we do have some that are in here. And I'll show you ways that we can determine what those are and how they might interact with the annotation scale that is currently set within the model. Now, if we start to take a look around inside of this drawing, we're just going to zoom in a little bit. You can start to see some annotation, such as the room label that we have here. But folks, we have other annotation within this design as well. In the adjacent office space that we have, if I keep zooming in and zooming in, eventually we see that there was, in fact, a room label here as well. It was just very small by comparison relative to what we were initially taking a look at when the, this model was first opened up. Now, when we start to take a look at this, this annotation I just showed you was placed using a particular textile that was configured specifically for use with annotation scale. As a matter of fact, if I go ahead and select the place text tool, when we come in and take a look at the text editor window, we can see the active textile. We can see the available textiles from the drop-down menu. Now, we can view the properties of a textile by opening up the textiles dialog. This was set up and configured for use in a real world one to one style situation, where the size of the text is 2.5 master units tall. Now, you may ask, well, what master units are we working with? And if we could take a look at File, Settings, followed by design file settings, you can see that the current active working units in this file are millimeters. So the size of that text, if we were to use it as is, would be 2.5 millimeters in height. And we have several others that are in here as well. A 3.5 millimeters, a five millimeters, and a seven millimeters textile. All of these are set up and configured based on a real world one to one height. Now that might work very well when you work within a sheeting layout, putting together some sort of print sheet. But when we work within the full size one to one design information, 2.5 millimeters tall would be very minute, very small, and very difficult to see. In fact, that was the situation that we saw here just a moment ago. Now it is still possible to come in and place a piece of text in MicroStation where you exaggerate the size of the text manually. Meaning in this case, if we knew that we were going to end up printing at a one to 100 scale, we want that text to be 2.5 millimeters tall. We could force that scale by taking 2.5 millimeters, multiplying it by the 100 scale factor set as it was placed. That is what you see with the room label 119. But folks, that is not easily workable if you have a situation where you might need to reuse that data at different scale factors and so forth. And so that's where the concept of annotation scale really comes into play. This allows you to come in and size the text relative to how you want to use it automatically based upon the intended print scale or the print size that you're looking for. Now, as we come in and start to look around at the current annotation scale in this file, if we go take a look at the model properties, it is set for full size one to one. That's the reason why most of the text in this file is at such a small scale relative to the zoom level at which you are currently viewing the data for. Now, I can make a change to that here. Within the model properties, if I wanted to come in and change that from a one to one to one to 10, for instance, it's a matter of selecting it from the drop down menu that we have here. Although we didn't really see anything happen here, at least not at this point. And that is simply because of a setting that's inherent in each of the models that we have in MicroStation. If we go and take a look at this model's properties one more time, just below the current active annotation scale setting of one to 10, we also have a toggle entitled propagate. Now, this is relative to anything that exists in the file already. If we make a change to the annotation scale, do you, in fact, want to apply that change or have it propagated to existing data that we have out there? And my guess is that most of the time you certainly would want to do so. So if we come in here and enable it, still nothing in the view has really changed. 
So here I'll set the annotation back to 1 to 1 and then to 1 to 10. Then immediately you can start to see a change within the microstation view. Now, as part of that then, that change was pretty minute, even still based on the current size of the information of the one-to-one -one floor plan that we're looking at. Now, I can make some additional changes to that if I wanted to by simply going back to the model properties and adjusting that from a 1 to 10 to a 1 to 20, for instance. We'll see that it makes an even bigger impact on the text. Now, that's all well and good to come in and change it in that fashion if you wish to, but that's still a bit tedious to take a look at and verify the annotation scale through the model properties. Now, you may ask, is there a better way? And certainly, in fact, I think there is a better way to come in and view that and make modification to it as needed. If we were to go to the Utilities tab, here we can see in the Drawing Scale Ribbon group, this lets you take a look at what the current set of working units are in the file, both the master units as well as the subunits. Here you can determine whether the annotation scale is in fact on and what the current value is. This is a great way to come and look at and make adjustments to the annotation scale very quickly and very easily. Here I went ahead and changed that to a 1 to 50 as you can see. And certainly enough, we saw the changes immediately take effect. You don't have to apply it. It just automatically updates within the active microstation model. Now, when we saw the 119 not reacting to the change of the annotation scale, that is because this was done with a manual exaggeration. When the piece of text was placed, it was not told to be annotative, but instead it was manually exaggerated by setting an oversize through a physical number rather than allowing it to follow the active annotation scale. And we'll talk more about that here in just a few moments. All right, now this works with an undo and redo. I have been at a 1 to 50, I went to a 1 to 25. I can easily change it back by simply doing an undo in MicroStation. And again, because we have Propagate enabled, that automatically updates anything that's annotatable inside of the MicroStation model, with one exception to that, and that is custom line styles. Now, as it stands here, we are just going to set this annotation scale to match what will be the print scale where this floor plan will be referenced ultimately to. That being said, I'll switch this to a 1 to 100. All right, so we just saw that annotation scale is a property that is unique to each model. That setting is dynamic and can be used to size up annotative elements. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.